Luffy and the Straw Hats are now worth over 8 billion berries! <laughs> Yes. yes, Oda has finally blessed us with new bounties for the entire Straw Hats, giving them the total value of 8 billion, 800, 6 million, and 1000 berries. This post Wano bounty not only reflects the growth we saw in the new world, but also the level of opponents the Straw Hats will be facing next. Bounties for some time have been used as an arbiter or even a milestone through our journey in the One Piece Series. But what it truly represents is that it's a reflection of an individual's threat and power they have to the world, specifically to the government. At times, this is regardless of the actual strength the person might have, as power comes in many ways, one of which, the most dangerous, is having the power of influence or knowledge. This is how we get ridiculous numbers from Robin as a child to even Buggy D Clown with a 3.189. 9 billion berry bounty. <laughs> I know these numbers can be confusing at times, but that's why we are going to break down every single member of the Straw Hats, explaining how and why they got their given bounty. Now, moving on. Hello? I have all your data and know where you live. Wh who is this? Only you had NordVPN. NordVPN? Who now? Wait, you don't know what NordVPN is? No. Come on, you guys know who NordVPN is, right? No. If you guys use our link in the description and pinned comment with NordVPN.com forward slash anime balls deep, you get an exclusive deal plus a huge discount. Nice. NordVPN is super easy to use where you just connect with one click on the map with over 5,300 servers in 60 countries. Or just turn on auto connect for zero click protection so you are always protected. I know you guys be on those dodgy sites sometimes you know, for research purposes, it, it happens to the best of us. And boy, do I wish I had NordVPN back then. Babe, what's High School DXD? Oh no! With NordVPN being available on every major platform from Windows, Android, iOS, Mac, Linux, and even Android TV, what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description or the pinned comment with nordvpn.com forward slash anime balls deep and get protected with this exclusive deal and special discount with a 30 day money back guarantee so you have nothing to lose. Now, back to the video. Welcome back everyone, Sam's got balls deep! Okay, so who better to start than our very own captain, Monkey D. Luffy. As of chapter 1053, on top of becoming an official Yonko, Luffy's post Wano bounty is a ridiculous 3 billion berry. That's it? Uh, 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 okay, okay. I know most of the community was expecting the bounty to be over 5 billion because let's be honest, Luffy deserves that number, especially considering that Luffy being Joy Boy and having the Sun God Nico fruit, which the government chased for over 800 years, you know, all of that should have just given him a greater value. But I'm here to tell you, Oda is actually a genius. And following from chapter 1052, the world government did the perfect political move in the situation they were in. Yes, there is a reason the five elders and Imsama doesn't want Luffy to be hyped up and chose to give him the same bounty as Law and Kid. Though these titles and bounties reflects both the threat and power of an individual towards the world government, overall it's just a means to control the perception of these so-called criminals. The Yonko were titles given to four pirates who had a ridiculous amount of control and influence over many other pirate crews, along with occupying self-governing islands. Both Luffy and Buggy now fits this description, and a bounty of a person isn't necessarily based on power, but also also includes any potential danger a person could have towards the government. No way! Luffy started his bounty journey with a simple, and I would even say humble, 30 million berries, which mind you, that's impressive for any rookie. After defeating Crocodile, it went up to 100 million. Once he declared war against the world government and defeated Rob Lucci, it shot up to 300 million. After the Great Summit War, his bounty skyrocketed to 400 million. But the biggest jump was in the new world, Luffy being the captain of the Straw Hat 
Democrats along with unwillingly named the leader of a grand fleet consisting from pirates with a total bounty of 4 billion 183 million 100 berries increased Luffy's overall infamy. On top of this, after learning of his declaration of war and invasion to Big Mom's island, the government recognized Luffy to be near on par with the likes of the Yonkos, effectively assigning Luffy with the bounty of 1.5 billion berry. Though he didn't really defeat Big Mom at this point, the press had exaggerated his feats and labeled him the fifth emperor of the sea. However, Luffy's new bounty of 3 billion berries is an overall reflection of his victory in Wano against the emperors of the sea, being both Big Mom and Kaido. Though Luffy didn't take down Big Mom, he could easily be seen as a leader of the alliance that did. Luffy held the banner for victory, giving morale to the other captains, Law and Kid, who believed Luffy will do his job of taking out the captain of the beast pirates, Kaido. And what do we know? He did it. And to the world government, it's something to be feared. What made it more dangerous is that Luffy proceeded to accomplish this very goal in an all out clash. Alongside Zoro, Law, Kid and Killer, Luffy fought Kaido and Big Mom. Kaido who has a bounty of 4,611,100,000 berry and Big Mom a bounty of 4,338,000,000 berries. During this battle, Luffy not only showcased his improvement from his last clash with Kaido but also gave Kaido a chilling feeling to think back to the strongest piracy ever encountered. This was amongst Shanks, Whitebeard, Rocks and even Odin. But you might be asking, Anime Balls of Deep, his bounty is only 3 billion. This is less than Kaido and Big Mom. This doesn't show that the government want him dead so bad. Well, the next moment we see is the true reason why Luffy's bounty was capped at 3 billion. The very thing that the world government was afraid of happened. Luffy had awakened his fruit and transformed into his Gear 5 Nika mode where he wraps things up with Kaido pretty good. This awakening revealed the true identity of the Gamu Gamu no Mi being the Hito Hito no Mi model Nika which Joy Boy possessed 800 years ago. Although this is one of the government's greatest fears, a higher bounty for Luffy would have gave more weight to the rumor that Luffy is actually Nika or Joy Boy. Traditions and cultures around the world have myths and stories scattered about this legendary liberator, Sun God Nika. So if Luffy's bounty were to shoot up to 1.5 billion to let's say 5 billion, which most of the community was thinking, becoming higher than Law and Kid, whom also had a hand in defeating Kaido and Big Mom, then it would have been used as a fuel for the rumor of the liberator being back, giving the oppressed people hope and strength to fight the oppression of the world nobles. As I said at the start of the video, it's just better politically for the world government to treat this as an event of alliance of Luffy, Kid and Law beating the emperors rather than Luffy's gear 5 Nika mode liberating the people of Wano. But a bounty of 3 billion isn't a small feat. You need to be truly recognized for not just your reputation but a Yonko level strength to garner this number. And Luffy does show this off with literally turning his fist into a size of a continent puller, dwarfing Onigashima itself, subsequently defeating Kaido. Ever since the time skip, Zoro didn't really have a proper fight where he was challenged too much. The only event which posed even a bit of challenge was him crossing swords with Admiral Fujitora in the beginning of Dressrosa. But other than that, none of Zoro's opponents have been even close to the level he showed in Wano. He fought the weak ass octopus Hyozo in Fishman Island, then he faced against Monet who basically pissed herself just through Zoro's presence, and Pika from Doflamingo's crew was j just, a, he, just a giant stone dude. Zoro can cut steel. A stone's not gonna be a problem, alright? Even then, Zoro's bounty rose to 320 million after Dressrosa. It probably would have been higher if he participated in the Whole Cake Island arc, but he got done dirty by having to get to Wano early, allowing Sanji to one-up him by 10 million. But now, once again, Roronoa Zoro, the vice captain of the Straw Hats, has claimed the silver seat with a new bounty of 1,101,000,000 berries. 
Yes. This number doesn't really come as a surprise, as in Wano, we got to see the peak of Zoro's power strengthened by Enma, where he not only sliced Kaido with his Conqueror's Hockey, but also defeated the Beast Pirates number 2 King, who had a bounty of 1,390,000,000. Since Zoro's entrance to Wano, he overcame Killer with only two swords while fending off attacks from Onimaru who possessed a mythical zone fruit. Eventually, Zoro ended up defeating Killer, who's a supernova. Afterwards, Zoro went through a huge power-up, gaining Enma, Odin's blade, which is one of the 21 Oawazumono great swords. Then, we move to the raid in Onigashima. Zoro is so strong here that without even the knowledge of his conqueror's hockey, he was making dudes faint left and right. After dealing with fodder gifters and destroying Apu's entire career in one slash, Zoro made his way up to the rooftop to battle both Big Mom and Kaido at the same time. When Luffy punched Kaido to the ground and Big Mom tried attacking with Prometheus, Zoro swooped in, splitting her attack infused with an Emperor's Conqueror's Haki like it was nothing using Kinemon's Foxfire style, which he learned by just observing. He didn't train or he didn't get taught, he just saw the technique and he learned it. Zoro then charged at Kaido alongside Killer, striking him with Enma. Unfortunately, Zoro wasn't able to use enough power out of Enma to damage Kaido, but it was strong enough that Big Mom screamed at Kaido to dodge it. Had Zoro trained a bit longer with Enma, I think the raid could have been over right there and then, with Zoro defeating a freaking emperor. Bro, no question is about to got this high. Zoro then also cut through Kaido Boro breath and tanked a thunderbolt strike from Big Mom. After Luffy's gear 4 ran out and he got eaten by Kaido, it was Zoro who unleashed a whirlwind flash which cut through Kaido's impenetrable scales. The only person who had damaged Kaido before like that was Kozuki freaking Odin and Zoro's at that level already. Zoro then tanked and resisted a combo attack by Big Mom and Kaido caught Hakai, allowing everyone to escape the attack. Dude, Zoro literally survived a god of destruction attack, all right? Like, he got lost in a different anime again. <laughs> Even though he took damage from this incident, without wasting any time, Zoro went after Prometheus, successfully cutting him into pieces, weakening Big Mom for the time. With Luffy down, Kid Killer gone after Big Mom, Zoro then decided to use all his strength to strike Kaido with a final attack, the Kiki Nine Sword style Ashura, which he had not used since Eni's lobby. Zoro unleashed a powerful blow on Kaido, actually inflicting a giant cut on Kaido's chest. Alongside slicing up the horns of the skull of Onigashima, forever cementing his feet in history. This attack was so strong that it would leave a scar according to Kaido. But that's not all this strike did, it also confirmed Zoro as a Conqueror's Haki user. All this time, Zoro had no idea he had Conqueror's Haki and still he was unknowingly infusing it with attacks. Even Luffy had to train for two years to properly make use of Conqueror's, but Zoro is over here like bruh I've been probably using it since day one, all right, and since Eni's lobby. After getting yeeted by Kaido's response, Zoro is teleported back down from the rooftop by law. Turns out that he had broken a lot of bones all over his body. After being taken to the care of Chopper and the Minx, Zoro was given an instant recovery medicine which would heal him right there with some very bad side effects. Zoro is then being protected by Marco until he swoops in with the three sword style Rengoku Onigiri against King. Zoro claiming he would win this battle against King, he blocks King's Tankyodon with an Ultra Gari. He blocked the strike, but he couldn't hold out for the impact and was sent flying out of the castle. King flies to kick Zoro out of the island, but Zoro uses clear lands to push himself back onto Onigashima. However, the longer the fight went on, Zoro started to struggle against King's Devil Fruit powers, barely blocking King's Imperial Deep Pride stake and countering with a 360 pound phoenix which didn't amount to anything. Zoro couldn't figure out a way to victory until he started to wonder if the fire on King's back was natural. He used a black robe dragon twister with no effect. King showcases why his race is something to be feared as he can switch between becoming literally invulnerable to dealing extreme damage. Zoro's battle IQ gets tested during this fight as he tries to figure out how to counter King. 
king. To test Zoro even further, his newly acquired sword Enma starts challenging him for more hockey. Having his attention split between the two, King manages to put Zoro at a complete disadvantage by forcing Zoro to drop his other swords. After dropping Sandai Kitetsu and with Enma still trying to drain all his hockey, Zoro looks at his Wado Ichimonji and thinks back to everything he learned in Wano and his childhood in Shimotsuki village, which then gives him the realization that Enma might be testing him if Zoro is really a person worthy of wielding it. This further pushes Zoro into the level of a Yonko, as like the other emperors, he managed to imbue his inner conqueror's hockey and even feed it to his swords. Zoro gives everything he has to Enma, regardless of the risk it may have to his life. With this newfound understanding of the will of the swords from his past, Zoro's connection to his blades become refined. For the first time, his swords become his friends, his Zanpakuto. At the same time, Zoro's battle IQ shoots to the roof as he figures out how King's innate ability works. So then Zoro waits for the right moment for King's weakness to emerge and manages to wound him. King now, scared of Zoro's attacks, tries to finish him off with a giant flame dragon which is hotter than magma. But Zoro just uses his Ipia Kusanjo Hiryu Jugaku to cut the dragon in two, dealing a massive hit on King, subsequently defeating him. Zoro not only beat a supernova being killer in Wano, he mastered Kinemon's foxfire technique, he scarred a Yonko, confirmed his conqueror's hockey and learned to pour his hockey into Enma, resulting in the defeat of a 1.39 billion berry bounty vice captain. With proper training of his conqueror's hockey and mastering on Enma, which will likely result in Enma becoming a black blade, especially since the skull grim reaper Zoro saw hasn't been explained yet. It could be Zoro speaking to his Zanpakuto to unlock Bankai. The world government has quite a bit to fear from Zoro after Wano, and let's not forget he knows about the existence of the Lunarians through King. Zoro's bounty of 1,101,000,000 berries is a well-deserved number. Next, we move on to Sanji, who sadly fell behind Zoro once again. What's even worse is that he isn't even the third highest. Rather, he is the fourth with a bounty of 1,032,000,000. This is Slice of Otaku from Plot Armor here to break down our favorite cook's journey to over a billion. Prior to entering Wano, Sanji's bounty skyrocketed. Not only did he lose the designation of only alive, but numerically, it nearly doubled from 177 million to 330 million, which with the formal addition of Jinbei to the crew, provided him with the third highest bounty on the Straw Hat crew, only just beating out Zoro for the position by 10 million. But man, what an arc it has been for Sanji in regards to his victories and capabilities. Sanji's fight and subsequent victory over Queen was astonishing and absolutely major in a number of ways. First and foremost, it is important to recognize the fact that Sanji's bounty previously only went as high up as it had on account of his family's name, Vin Smoke. This on its own, despite Sanji failing to do anything all too momentous in the grand scheme of things during Whole Cake Island, made him out to be a rather dangerous individual. Which is certainly the case, but all things considered, he lacked a great deal of the capabilities possessed by his siblings that truly made them such a force to be reckoned with. Despite lacking bounties of their own, at least to our knowledge, the mainstays of Germa 6-6 by way of militaristic propaganda was once considered to be relatively synonymous with evil itself. It's to the point where many don't even believe the organization to be real. However, over the course of Sanji's battle against Queen, we saw the Black Black Plague Pirate would stand the onslaught of his siblings' various attacks, which had been replicated by Queen by way of similar technology. Every one of those attacks landed onto Sanji's form, but none succeeded in defeating or even severely harming him. Furthermore, Sanji, despite the manifestation of his latent German modifications, unlike his siblings, is not emotionally inept. If his siblings are cold-blooded machines, then Sanji is a renegade terminator. Sanji was observed by many to have casually sustained blow after blow from Queen, to the point of the All-Star's weapon shattering when used against him. All the while, Sanji was clearly having more difficulty coming to terms with his newfound identity crisis than he was in this fight against Queen. And this is Queen the Plague we are talking about. The man with the third highest bounty of the Beast Pirates sitting at a whopping 1 billion 320 million berry. That's over a billion berry difference as Sanji Bridge while largely being distracted by his own inner turmoil. That is insane. Not to mention that by way of armament hockey and fusion, on top of his reinforced exoskeleton and other bodily amplifications, Sanji is now capable of delivering blows several times stronger than he ever Ever had before. We have upgraded to blue flames, people. Meanwhile, he was already able to disfigure the faces of his siblings via kicks previously, so just imagine now. And he can do all of this even without a raid suit. Sanji is perhaps the most dangerous creation to have ever.
never emerged from Germa 66. And although out of his control, his siblings had been revealed to have successfully emerged from captivity on Whole Cake Island, leaving much destruction in their wake, which may very well add to the infamy of Sanji as a member of the family, whether he likes it or not. Now with the new bounty of 1 billion, 32 million, Sanji is now considered one of the highest rated cooks. But Jinbei still beat his bounty. Alright, next up, Jinbei, Knight of the Sea, the former warlord and the helmsman of the Straw Hat's new bounty is 1.1 Billion. Now, with his starting known bounty being 76 million berries since his time with the Fisher Tigers crew, Jinbei's bounty didn't see any increases as he was a Warlord of the Sea and they have their bounties frozen. But after he resigned from the Warlords refusing to fight against Whitebeard, his bounty was raised to 226 million. Then after his participation at Marineford, it increased it again, this time to 4 100 million. Post time skip, his bounty hasn't seen any change, but that's likely due to how ridiculously high it already was. When Jinbei joined the Straw Hats at the start of the raid, he had the second highest bounty, only second to Luffy himself. So with him escaping Totoland, destroying a Beast Pirate battleship, becoming part of Luffy's crew officially, then going on to take down a member of the Tobiropo with the highest bounty of 546 million and Barry who's who, it is no question that his bounty is this high right now. I mean, who's who wasn't just part of the Tobiropo, no, 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 but a former member of Cypher Pol. Who's who revealed himself to be one of the best Rokushiki users, the trademark martial art of Cypher Pol. Jinbei held his own against a top class Rokushiki user using his own Fishman Karate. But that is not all Jinbei had to worry about, as Who's Who was an ancient type Zoan fruit user of the Neko Neko no Mi Sabertooth Tiger. He transformed into his hybrid form, rushing at Jinbei with his own unique Shigan and Gagan variant of the Rokushiki. Jinbei, even though he is a fishman, managed to dodge the Gagan and Shigan barrage thrown at him by Who's Who. He was even complimented for having such high speeds on land. Who's Who then brought out his special technique called the Shigan Madara, repeatedly striking Jinbei, but Jinbei just tanked all of the hits like a boss to the point of who's whose fingers breaking. Like, just let that settle in real quick, okay? Jinbei's armament hacky was so strong, like, damn, what? Jinbei stepped on his tail and wasted him with an Onigawara Seiken. His former prestige as a Warlord of the Sea is a title you can only have if the government recognised your threats and power. And now, having defeated not only a former CP9 agent with a bounty of 546 million who also possessed knowledge of Nika, Jinbei with his S-Class hacky usage which has been honed for decades in the new world poses a massive threat towards the government. Nami's first bounty was 16 million berries, which she was granted after the uproar with the straw hats created on Eni's lobby. She defeated a member of the CP9 Califer, but her bounty was likely increased to this number primarily because of her association with these straw hats and causing such an incident. Her second bounty came from Dress Rosa of 66 million through, again, her affiliation with the Straw Hat Pirates. However, this number doesn't really showcase her true value and newfound strength since Whole Cake Island. I mean, remember, she was one of the first Straw Hats to hurt Big Mom with her own power of Zeus. Now, whilst this is cool and all, the world government doesn't really care too much about her new powers. They care about her actual feats, which are by no means some more ones. Her main accomplishment in Wano is dealing the final blow to Ulti. Now, whilst Big Mom did the majority of the damage, the world government won't care much as the final blow is what matters when it comes to bounties. She dealt the final blow with her new version of the Climb Attack, and as we said, Big Mom did most of the damage, as Zeus states that Ulti is pulverised on the inside from Big Mom's attack. So, Nambi decides to blast her with a huge bolt of lightning, defeating her big good. And also, we have to remember that Ulti's bounty is 400 million berries. Ulti was <laughs> no joke. Despite being young, 
young, she is extremely powerful. Powerful enough to put our boy Luffy on guard, making him consider using Gear 4. This may make you wonder, then why does Ulti not have a higher bounty ABD? Well, because she is not a captain and has not caused as much of an uproar as Luffy has. Remember, bounties are not solely based on raw power. This is also Nami's third bounty with the Straw Hats, making the world government aware now that she is an integral member of the crew. So keeping all of that in mind, we can piece together why the world government came to the conclusion of giving her a bounty of 366 million berries after the events of Wano. So now onto the demon child herself, Nico. Robin. Robin's bounty is the one out of all of the straw hats which is calculated in a very different way. Since her bounty is not based on power or influence, but her knowledge from Ohara. Since she was first introduced, Robin has been wanted by the world government. Even when she was only eight years old, her bounty was 79 million berries. When we first learned this, it it didn't really make any sense to us. But knowing what we know now, that bounty is actually an understatement of her importance because she can read the road poneglyphs. After the events of Eni's lobby, Oda decided that 79 million? Uh, that wasn't a good round number, so he increased it to 80 million. He, he... Okay, but in all seriousness, the world government couldn't be too honest with her bounty since people would be extremely suspicious and confused on why Robin had such a high bounty. So they couldn't just increase it to billions, although that's how much they wanted her. We'll go more into this in just a minute. Post time skip Robin was just a utility tool, with her bounty only going up to 130 million after Dress Rosa because all the Straw Hats bounties got increased. But this changed in Wano, as Robin finally demonstrated her new physical and mental prowess. She easily dismissed the illusion that was placed on her effectively knocking out the numbers around her. Robin then proceeds to a 1v1 fight with Black Mario, who is another member of the Tobi Ropo, with a bounty of 480 million berries. This is where Robin shines in Wano and post time skip in general. She knows that she does in fact have armament hacking, which contributes to her new bounty and even has new forms with more applications of her devil fruit powers. Her first new power she demonstrated was turning herself into a giant. Now I'm not just talking about like one or maybe two limbs, I'm talking her entire upper body. This ability is actually pretty similar to Komamura's Bankai in Bleak. As despite it seeming to be a separate entity, the damage sustained to it is transferred back to the user. Robin even showed off her ingenuity in this fight, using Fishman Karate to bring the roof down on Black Mary, buying time so that she could transform into an actual demon. This new power labelled Demonia Fleur turns Robin into a huge spider looking creature, which has armament hacky coated on all of her limbs, and with it she easily destroys Black Mary. And unlike Nami, Robin did the majority of the damage contributing to her new bounty. Now these feats are already insane, warranting a bounty far, far surpassing her last. But like we mentioned, the world government wants Robin more than anyone else in the world right now, and they have no reason to hide it anymore. What do I mean by this? Well, let me explain. The reason the world government understated her bounty before was to avoid suspicion, like I said. But with Luffy, Sanji and Zoro all having bounties in the billions, and the entire Straw Hat crew being instrumental in the defeat of two emperors, hers being increased so exponentially makes sense since it can be masked by the flashier members of the crew and the populace being focused on the other giant enormous news like the new emperors. And because of this, her insane new bounty of 930 million berries is very deserved for the demon child 
Nico Robin. God Usopp, Soge King, the man who burned down the government's flag, the Kami who is so strong that people collapse by just looking at him. Usopp is the man in the straw hat who can do everything and nothing at the same time. He first got his bounty after Eni's lobby through his persona of Soge King, then with his newfound observation hockey, he defeated an officer of the Don Quixote group Sugar. In Wano, Usopp became an expert salesman creating the cure to everything with his signature toad oil. He didn't stop at just that though, as he piloted the Brachio tank v shooting at Big Mom, a freaking emperor, and managing to get away from her with little to no injury. Usopp then skirmishes with Page One and Ulti, whose bounties are 290 million and 400 million respectively. Although scared, he taunted them both with an expert technique known as hide behind Nami so they think it's her talking. He also tanked a headbutt from Ulti, fleeing along Tama and Nami. Usopp used his sniping skills to turn the tide to the Onigashima battle by feeding Dongos to the gifters and headliners of the Beast Pirates and bringing them to the Alliance side. Usopp then tanked a second headbutt from Ulti, smashing him onto the floor. As Ulti was strangling Tama, Usopp staying conscious after a Ulti headbutt separated the two using his Midori Boshi Sagaroshi attack. Now, as Big Mom was fighting on the second floor against Kid and Law, she emitted a massive surge of Konkurasaki which collapsed the Beast Pirates. Usopp seized this moment and claimed himself Usotachi, the sibling hunter who defeated the two Tobiropos. This was likely seen by CP0 and just like in the past where the world government believed Usopp to be Sogi King or God Usopp, they label him Usohachi, the sibling hunter. This also probably made them believe that Usopp not only defeated Tobi Rubble members, but he has Conqueror's Hockey giving further evidence to his new bounty of 500 million berries. Frankie, 394 million berries. The shipwright of the straw hats and the man with the knowledge of the ancient weapon Pluton's blueprints. From his defeat of the Cypher Pole 9 agent Fukuro and possession of the Pluton blueprints, his first ever bounty started off as 44 million berries. After the Dress Rosa incident where he defeated Senor Pink and destroyed the Smile Factory, his bounty rose to 94 million berries through his affiliation with the Straw Hats. In Onigashima, Frankie showed off his true power up after his two year study session of Vegapunk's research. He ran over Big Mom's face with his Kurosai FRU4, then he fired his radical beam at the number jockey which was strong enough to make the giant fumble and let go of the Brachio tank. This cannon is similar to the land version of the Sunny's Ganon cannon. So Frankie literally has a ship's worth of cannon power in the palm of his hands. Frankie then used the coolest ability yet. He combined Kurosai and Brachio tank to create General Frankie, which he pilots from inside like a mech. He then fought the armor division of the Beast Pirates under the command of Sasaki, a member of the Tobi Ropo with a bounty of 472 million berries. He faced off against boss Sasaki who activated his full-on dinosaur form through his Triceratops Ancient Zone. Because of the Ancient Zone's durability, it proved to be a tough battle, made even tougher when Sasaki made his lackeys restrain General Frankie. But Usopp and Nami came to their rescue, freeing Frankie and getting rid of the armor division by feeding them Tama's Dango. This gave Frankie the opportunity to land a surprise attack using his Franken sword, slashing Sasaki using the Shorino V-Flash. Sasaki finally entered his hybrid form using the special hunting move of the Triceratops, the Heliceratops, because this is how dinosaurs hunted in the past. The two then engaged in a sword fight boosting Frankie's skill even more because he's not only a cool mech with laser cannons but he can sword fight and he can also throw down suplexes like he's Brock Lesnar. Bro what can this man not do? Frankie then using his AI sniping skills used the strongest laser in his arsenal the general cannon causing Sasaki to do a kamikaze attack in a final last ditch effort to beat Frankie. But the 
cool thing about a mech is that you can just evacuate from it. Finally finishing off Sasaki with a radical beam. Through the upgrades to his cyborg body he acquired in the time skip at full display, Frankie's win over a member of the Toby Robo with a bounty of 476 million, the world government is sure to be fearful of this mech after Wano, which is evident by his new bounty. Like if I was the world government and saw Frankie was using radical beams which look awfully similar to the pacifistas lasers, not to mention his probable knowledge of Pluton and now he has access to Wano's factories and weapon production capabilities. After all this, Frankie's bounty of 394 million is, is a no brainer. Soul King Brook, the musician of the straw hat, the dead man who faced off against a Yonko and survived to tell about it. Brook started off his pirate career with a bounty of 33 million 49 years ago when he was made the captain of the Rumbar Pirates. After joining the Straw Hats, his bounty rose to 83 million for simply being part of the Straw Hats after Dress Rosa. Brooke is the reason for the Straw Hats having two road poneglyphs as he managed to sneak and transcribe Big Mom's poneglyph surviving against her hockey. During Onigashima, where CP0 had eyes everywhere, Brooke managed to become a pest to Big Mom once again, slicing Zeus in two with the sword. He was then unaffected by not just the ice oni virus created by Queen, a former member of Mads, but the illusion mist by Black Maria turned out to be ineffective against Brooke as well. Because you know, he lived alone for 50 years aboard a ship. Emotional damage is something he has lived with for five decades. Brooke assisted Robin in defeating Black Maria, a member of the Toby Robo with a bounty of 480 million berries. If it wasn't for Brooke calling out to Robin, breaking her illusion, Robin would likely be done for. He fought Black Maria's subordinates, defeating them by luring them under ice blocks and washing them effortlessly in one attack, showcasing his experience in battle from all these years. Brooke not only is a capable fighter for the Straw Hats, but his value in a support role is massive. Just the fact that he has lived for this long provides immense knowledge and experience to the crew. With CP0 witnessing his swordplay boosted by the title of Soul King, Brooke's bounty of 383 million is honestly a well-deserved number. Tony Tony Chopper, the cutest cotton candy loving creature in the whole of One Piece. Not only did he do every Asian parents proud by becoming the best doctor, but also has the most banger OST in anime. <laughs> Chopper is literally the dark horse of the Straw Hats, if not the whole One Piece series altogether. But leaving aside the mystery behind his invention of the Rumble Ball, or even his part as the doctor for the crew, during the Ennis Lobby arc, Chopper was crucial on rescuing Robin, and stood alongside his crew defying the world government. On top of that, this was the first time Chopper revealed his monster point transformation and went absolutely wild. Amongst the community, this was discussed as the first time we saw a Zoan Devil Fruit Awakening. With this form, Chopper was even capable enough to defeat CP9 members all alone with his incredible strength. And because of this incredible achievement, Chopper received an unbelievable high bounty of 50 berries. <laughs> Things don't really go up from there as even after the time skip, when Luffy and his crew defeats a warlord in the new world, Chopper's bounty only goes up by another 50 berries, making his total amount 100. So yeah, Chopper might not be the biggest threat in the eyes of the world government, meaning his bounty doesn't truly reflect what he is capable of doing, especially with his monster point transformation. Don't forget that Chopper was capable of stopping one of Big Mom's attack for a brief second. On top of that, I do have to say Chopper is one of the most versatile crew members of the Straw Hats, as he doesn't only have muscles, he also has brains, as he's arguably the best doctor in the entire world of One Piece, and to be honest, that is truly where he shines the most. 
Chopper has the ability to adapt and quickly think of a solution using his knowledge as a doctor. We see this ability in the raid of Onigashima when Queen infected the samurais with an unknown virus that turns all of them into ice onis. Whilst in the midst of battle and being affected himself by the virus, Chopper stayed calm and was able to figure out a temporary way to delay the disease from spreading all over the body. And in just a few minutes, he made the cure to counter the virus. So with that being a big asset to the Straw Hats, along with having more of a spotlight in the raid of Onigashima, the government and the CP0 members who was on looking should have considered him more of a threat now than ever before, right? This is also considering that the world government knowing he's part of a Yonkos crew and a strong pirate, they have to stop seeing him as just a pet or a raccoon or just a mascot. He's more than that, right? 1000 and berries. What did you guys expect? However, I want to note that it is a possibility the real reason for Chopper's low bounty is because the government are trying to hide something and possibly was influenced by Dr. Vegapunk. The reason this could be the case is Chopper's rumble balls might hold the secrets to unlock the power of the devil fruits and the special science group or SSG would want to take him covertly into figuring out what he knows about these rumble balls or how it even works. Otherwise they are most definitely taking the piss with 1000 berries. Like come on. Anyway guys that's it for our straw hats and their bounties. Let me know what you guys think. Did Oda do justice? Was it what you expected? And also don't forget to check out Plot Armor's channel as they have amazing One Piece content for you guys to binge.